In sports, there's always been a rather simple rule to competing. I could say it, but I think it's better received from Herm Edwards. This is what the greatest thing about sports is. You play to win the game. Hello? Nicely said, Herm. You hear it all the time. Players, coaches, owners, athletic directors. Unless you're a tanking professional sports franchise like them, 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 or them, you simply play to win the game. But what if I told you that when it comes to college basketball, the best way to win might be to lose? What if I told you that there is strong historical evidence to back this claim up? And what if I told you that this wasn't an ESPN 30 for 30? Let's take a closer look at why losing now could lead to winning later in the crazy world of college basketball. In order to fully understand what I'm talking about here, we must venture all the way back to 1976, where a little old team from Bloomington, Indiana was taking the nation by storm one game at a time. They started their season off by beating the Soviet Union national team by 16 points, and they followed that up with wins against UCLA, Notre Dame, Kentucky, and Michigan. By the time the tournament came around, the Hoosiers were undefeated, and all eyes were on them to see if they could close out a historic season. Well, flash forward a few weeks, and on the backs of Hall of Fame coach Bobby Knight, Naismith Award winner Scott May, and All-American Kent Benson, the Hoosiers made history, becoming the seventh team in the NCAA tournament era to finish the season undefeated. Since then, while many teams like 1991 UNLV, 2014 Wichita State, and 2015 Kentucky have tried to accomplish the perfect season, no team since those Hoosiers has been able to escape the peril of at least one loss during the year. Now you're probably saying, and rightfully so, well duh Bobby, well duh, going undefeated is hard. But trust me, there's a better and more applicable point to this video than just the obvious truth that going undefeated is somewhat difficult. We now focus our attention to February, yes just the month of February. As the calendar nears towards college basketball's main event, we can't lose sight of the importance of the prequel, which is obviously relevant in many ways, but here's one that you may not have been aware of. So, since the NCAA tournament expanded to 64 teams in 1985, there has been one common denominator among most national championship winners, and that is that they all lost at least once in or after February. In fact, the only team that has gone undefeated from February 1st onward and then gone on to win the national championship was the 1995 UCLA Bruins led by Ed O'Bannon. That team finished with a 31-2 overall record, and its last loss came to Cal on January 28, 1995. That team had six future NBA draftees, including Ed's brother Charles and point guard Tyus Edney. UCLA is the exception to the rule, though. The standard remains that every other champion since 1985 has lost at least one game in February or March before winning the NCAA tournament. This fact supports my long-held theory that it's extremely important to get a loss out of your system before it bubbles up to the surface at a rather inconvenient time. Just ask the 2013 Gonzaga Bulldogs. That team finished 29-2 in the regular season and went undefeated in West Coast Conference play, and their last loss came on January 19th at Butler. I'm sure we all remember the Roosevelt Jones play. After foul, far right away. Because you got to hope for a dramatic three. Oh boy! Oh, he got it! Oh, Jones! Yeah! Gonzaga seemed poised for a deep run, but ultimately their title quest underwhelmed significantly as they were bounced by a ninth seeded Wichita State in the second round. Funnily enough, Wichita State added themselves to this category the next year, whereas an undefeated one seed in 2014, they got bounced by Kentucky in the second round. And then in 2015, Kentucky was undefeated going into the tournament, but they ended up losing to Wisconsin in the Final Four. Still, giving a few examples seems rather anecdotal. So how many teams have actually gone undefeated through February and March entering the NCAA tournament? Well, here's your answer. So since 1985, there have been 31 top four seeds that have entered the tournament having not lost since before January 31st. This list includes juggernaut teams like 1986 Duke, 1991 UNLV, 2007 Ohio State, 2014 Wichita State, 2015 Kentucky, and 2016 Kansas. Yet none of them could win six in a row at the end of the year to be crowned a national champion. And here's the full list if you're interested, dating back from 1985 Georgetown and most recently 2018 Gonzaga. So what does all of this mean? It means that teams aren't wired to go so long without a loss. It takes an exceptional and fortunate run to do so. 
and in the current state of college basketball, no team is unbeatable. As a fan, I'd want my favorite team to get a cold shooting night or a poor defensive effort out of the way before the most important games arise. So do you want to win in April? It's probably best to lose in February. Even dominant teams like 2012 Kentucky and 2018 Villanova had slip-ups right before the tournament. Kentucky lost to Vanderbilt, yeah, Vanderbilt, in the SEC Tournament Championship, and Villanova fell to Providence at the dunk on Valentine's Day of 2018. The best way to win later is to lose now. So you think Gonzaga looks like the clear title favorite? Tell them to lose. They are probably the best example of this too because this trend has eaten Gonzaga up and spit them out five times since 2003. Looking like Baylor can run the table? Not so fast, my <laughs> Admittedly, this trend will only apply to a few, if any, teams by the end of the season. Luckily, teams in the tougher conferences tend to beat each other up at least once, so we don't have to worry about this a whole lot. But if you're a Gonzaga fan, you might want to rethink the importance of a win in the WCC Tournament Championship. If you're Baylor, maybe a loss in Morgantown or Allen Fieldhouse isn't the worst thing in the world. And if you're Michigan, you might want to consider seeing the benefits of losing to Illinois. Think about it as tanking with rather immediate benefits. So a loss now necessarily isn't the worst thing in the world, because I'd much rather lose on a big Monday in February than a championship Monday in April. And remember, losing now, winning later.